talking about it, developer guide to work on your marketing teams. I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do a lot of SEO. You have to work with developers. And uh, you want to make sure things work smoothly. Yeah. At the end of the day, you have to work together. So, um, yeah, I think it will be interesting for a lot of us. So, give it up for Reese. As Arma said, I'm a developer. I'm here to present the developer's guide to working with marketing teams. So, just first of all, a very brief introduction about myself. I started working with WordPress in 2006. I then worked uh, as a search engine optimizer slash WordPress developer for an agency based uh, in Wales, where I'm originally from, uh, for four years. I then moved to Manchester, worked as a pure digital marketer between 2010 and 2012. I then returned to WordPress development for a marketing agency in 2012, and I went freelance in 2018. Why am I telling you all this? Basically, I'm a developer who kind of knows a little bit about marketing. So, as well as WordCamps, I go to a lot of uh, SEO and digital marketing meetups. And because a lot of my background is originally in there, um, I know a few people there, and I get introduced to the county. People kind of put their arms around me and say, hey, this is Reese. he's a developer, who kind of knows a little bit about SEO. And the look back is akin to the three eyed aliens, the look they give the claw in the original Toy Story, because it's kind of like, ooh. He's a developer who kind of knows about SEO. It's great. And then we kind of get talking. It's a wonderful time to talk to them. And then it gets really, really depressing because they talk about all the time that they have been burned. And it kind of sucks because it's not necessarily a bad, um, bad developers or bad marketers, but bad communication. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will learn to work together as an amazing team and will achieve great things like what Wales did in Euro 2016. And I still know have not shut up about it. So, why should you do it? Well, if you get them on your side, it's a really, really useful position to be in because it helps out a lot. Um, we're coming to the end of this work camp, and there's been great talks about like all sorts of developments um, in WordPress and how to do cool, cool stuff. Um, it can be difficult to kind of get inspiration and ideas for, for things like that. So having a marketer who will come up with these great ideas that you can then build is a really, really cool thing to have. They will also go into bash for you, so um, they will also sit in meetings and say, look, we can't lose the development team from the budget. They're really, really cool. Can we keep them, please? Thank you very much. It's a useful thing to have. Plus, also, what you do can seem like magic. So whilst it can be easy to impress, it can also be um, easy to frustrate them. So what do you do? Marketers are judged on key performance indicators, which are KPIs. These are what marketing strategies are built around, and this is what the agency ultimately is um, will be judged on. Things like sales increase, have there been an increase in sales? Traffic increase, has there been an increase in traffic? Rankings increase is also one. Um, there are other things as well, like social media kind of interacting that you won't be able to control. So you won't be able to control all of them, but you could control some of them. So once you can control on, on basically things like on page changes, so conversion rates, are there improvements to the site to improve the user experience on the site and to make a conversion easier? Rankings. Google has said the rankings, you may not think that, but Google have said that they use site speed as a ranking factor. So thinking about improving site speed um, can improve your ranking, so you can help with that. And click-through rate, um, improving the site architecture and improving uh, the on-page experience uh, can help click-through rate from search engines. Now, you won't be able to control all of it. So, for example, a conversion rate, if the marketing team does a poor pay-per-click campaign, conversion rate will drop. Rankings, if the marketing team builds really, really dodgy links from really, really dodgy places on the internet, um, you can be hit with a manual penalty and uh, rankings can drop. And if the marketing team prioritizes the wrong page, it can affect, affect the click-through rate or click-through ratio. So, be aware, but just don't be judged. Now, usually when you start working with marketing teams, it's usually, it's usually like a couple of meetings at the beginning. And the first meeting is generally quite lovely because you're kind of like finding out about them and it's really, really sweet. 
and you're like kind of going, oh, you know, can we have a coffee or beer or a nice lunch or something? It's really, really fluffy and really, really lovely. And then they send you an email three weeks later and I go, I really enjoyed working, you know, really enjoyed our first meeting together. Here is a list of what's everything that you've, that you've found that is wrong with your site. Now, you don't necessarily say it in those words, but that's what they mean. And this is like the, the big list of things they want to turn your pride and joy, you know, to improve it. So how do you deal with it? Well, the easiest thing to do is for us for it to be prioritized. Now, if they're a good marketing agency, they'll turn around and kind of go, okay, cool, right, go away, prioritize it, blah, 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 and send it back. It could be really unhelpful and say, well, all of it's a priority. And if all of it's a priority, none of it's a priority, so you will probably have to prioritize it for them. And this is a point you refer back to the key performance indicators. This point is also really, really useful uh, to get Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools access. I still call it Google Webmaster Tools, it serves console. I apologize, I, I'm old school and still call it that. I also apologize for the next slide because there's no way you're going to read it. Um, I really, really apologize, but I'm putting these slides online afterwards. Um, so, for example, if the KPIs are to improve conversions, going back to the original KPIs I just did at the start. In Google Analytics, you go to behavior, site content, and landing pages. You get something that looks like this. I apologize, you can't read it. And there is a top bar on the top, which is about here, which has um, goal set up. So if the marketing agency has set up goals for your site, and they, they, they should, you know, otherwise they're, they're, they're bad to their job. Um, you can click on the goal set. So there's goal set one, goal set two, goal set three, goal set four, and e-commerce. Now, goal set one to four are kind of like arbitrary things. So, for example, one could be um, like like any sort of like potential lead. So, have they filled out the contact form? Have they clicked on the phone number? Things like that. One could be like some form of like further interaction. So, have they clicked on your Facebook profile? Have they clicked on your Twitter handle? Have they clicked? Uh, have they signed up for newsletter? Things like that. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's, it's an arbitrary thing. You could always pick everything in goal set one, or you can split it up. The other one is a big difference is e-commerce because e-commerce has like ranking data. Anyway. You have a list of them. You have a couple of links in the top, which is here. And if you click on them, um, you can do the conversion rate for landing pages. Again, I'm really sorry you can't see it. So, for example, on this one, you need to look for pages that have a few conversions already, so they're doing, they're doing some work. They're actually working. Um, and see if you can increase the conversion rate. Um, so, for example, in this one, you'd look at the home page, has a conversion rate of 3.2%, see if you can kind of increase it. So, the one of the goal sets of is filling up the contact form. So, this is on my side. Um, similarly, to improve rankings, look at pages that are getting a lot of traffic in, in Google Analytics where you go to behavior, site speed, and speed suggestions. You can also filter it further, so you can filter it by organic traffic, um, which you should, because you don't care about pay-per-click traffic. Also traffic based on the device as well, so if you get a lot of mobile traffic or, or desktop traffic, you can filter by that. And then there's a link here, I don't know if you can see it, um, called page speed suggestions. Now you can click on that link, alternatively you go to the Google page speed tool and put in a URL of any page on there, you can click on that and go to analyze, go to the same place. Um, Google Page Speed Tools, one of the tools I use, it's kind of like my backup one. I don't actually use it, but for two slides, I'm going to explain it. Put the URL of your chosen page and click Analyze. You get to something that looks like this. First of all, um, the, the best cobbler wears the worst shoes. So this is my site. I know it's 65. I haven't had time to improve it. Um, you get like a page speed scroll, which is this big round number at the top. Completely ignore it. It's an arbitrary number that Google's just made up. What you need to look for is a little bit further down is lab data, because this gives you like real numbers. So it's like, it gives you numbers uh, for how fast things learn, and it's also mobile first. So this is like over a mobile connection. Um, so for this, this is like trying to interact with on a mobile connection is 6.6 .6 seconds. Trying to interact with is basically how long before you can start interacting with the site, so how long before you can start reading it and scrolling it and things like that. 
One cool thing about the Google tool is you're beginning to get WordPress focus improvements. So for example, this is this is again my site and it kind of says eliminate render blocking resources. So this is basically saying I'm taking some of Haley's talk and I apologize. Um, but basically this is like we load things at the top of the page and we should really be loading at the bottom because we don't need it at the top. So it, it, it comes away with that and basically says like you could shave a second off your load time. The, the cool thing about this though is that here's a bunch of plugins that this is for you. And it doesn't link to a specific plugin, it just lists to like a tag, um, which is useful. Finally, the click-through rate, uh, the final KPI is include click-through rate. Uh, this is in Google Search Console. Go to Google Search Console performance, filter by page URL, so you want just the home page. This is quite a laborious task um, to kind of look at. So filter by page URL, put your home page in there. Um, and also filter further, maybe you just want to take everything that doesn't get a single click. And then you want to filter it by click-through ratio ascending. So you want the lowest click-through ratio of some of searches of leading to clicks to your site at the top. You'll get a list of keywords, um, which which basically go to your homepage. And you kind of like go, well, maybe you, you get a lot of impressions for it. So Google has associated your site with that keyword, but it's going to your homepage. Maybe you can build a page that will is actually dedicated to that keyword. So, for example, in this one, um, in this one, for example, uh, WordPress developer freelancer. Um, I get a couple of clicks through that, um, and I'm down in position 59. So I can build like a page that's dedicated to that keyword, and hopefully increase that. If all else fails, estimate the time and cost for each task. Right. Right, soft skills. I'd originally done this talk before, and I did this talk in um, <coughs> WordCamp Brighton. And somebody came up to me after the talk and said, Rhys, really enjoyed your talk. However, I had a problem with this slide. And I was like, okay. And they explained it, and I was like, yeah, made complete amount of sense. I still decided to keep it in but i put a caveat on the next slide. Soft skills are hard. They're really, really tough. You can't get syntax errors on humans. You know, humans are difficult people to deal with. Um, it's something that I struggle with as well. You know, my GitHub profile is a lot more impressive than my Tinder profile. And it's, it's just one of those things I struggle with. And communication and speaking to marketers is low in important skill. And, they, and, and, and you will be speaking to them, and it can make a difference between a good experience and a bad experience. So rather than teach you how to speak to people, um, I'm going to try and teach you a few things that I hear occasionally um, to be do or do not do. Um, this is marketing isn't a build it and they will come approach. Um, this is getting better. I used to be going to work camps and they would kind of go, there'd be, there'd be talks and they kind of go, Oh, if you just produce good content, you will rank. And whilst that is kind of true, it can be also really frustrating because it's like saying, if you are really fast to the Olympic Games, you'll win a gold medal. Yeah, it, it makes complete amount of sense, but you're missing everything leading up to that point. And, you know, you could fall over in the Olympic Games. You can, there'll be times that good content won't rank. It will just be one of those weird experiences. So, yeah. Um, marketing is a lot more difficult than that. Avoid micromanaging. It's annoying. You hate it. I hate it. Everybody hates it. But micromanaging is down from micromanaging your clients. Um, so what do I mean by this? So when I work with a client, I generally have at the absolute most twice daily updates, unless I'm using like a dedicated project management tool like Asana or Trello or something like that, where it's a lot easier to update them. Um, on a particular task, I will, if it's just like communicating over email, I will send an email usually at the end of the day or twice a day at the absolute most, unless it's like a bit of a rush of a project. Um, but make them aware of, make them aware of changes on things they need to do before they need to be done. So for example, when I start a project, I will ask for um, SFTP details, I'll ask for WordPress logins. Even if the project starts in six months or six weeks' time, 
because that way they have six weeks to get those details to me. Um, I had this one fairly recently that on the day of launch, they told me that they were going on QVC 20 minutes after going live, and I was like, no, you know. We're not going live then. Thanks for telling me that. But yeah, it was, it was just... Mad. So, so yeah, make people aware of things you need before you actually need them and as soon as possible. That's quite an explain why. What do I mean by this? Well, if a request is made that you don't necessarily agree with, ask why needs to be done rather than say, oh, it can't be done. Either one of three things will happen. Either you'll get some understanding of why it needs to be done, and you can kind of go, okay, cool, we'll, we'll, we'll add this to the workflow. They may also realize it's not a good idea, because um, when they start formulating it and kind of like saying, think, they can think about it, they may go, actually, it can't be done, so yeah, fair enough. Or you end up in exactly the same place you were before you started. At this point, explain why it's a bad idea. Generally, in de development, most things can be done, generally speaking, unless you're working with like external APIs or, or anything like that. Um, things do take time, though. So what may be perceived to be a 10-minute job um, is actually can be quite a lot more substantial. Um, I had this one recently where we were using the WordPress post ID um, as an invoice number, and they were just like, well, the invoice numbers are getting ridiculously big, can we just take three numbers off it? And it's like, no, you can't really do that. It's going to be a lot more difficult. And explaining why they got an understanding we kind of worked out another solution, so things like that. So it's just your knowledge. Um, I give this talk the other way around, so I give a talk to marketers about the thing they shouldn't say to their development team. And there's a bit in it which is uh, the three worst words that a developer can say to, a, a marketer can say to a developer is, can you just, can you just do this? The three worst words that a developer can say to a marketer is, well, can't you just, can't you just do this? It's very dangerous to assume knowledge. Um, I've been working WordPress now for 13, 14 years. Um, I've been in, I've had my code put in, I'm in the credits for WordPress and two releases. Um, I've been running those now for 18 months. Can I use command line interface to log into a server for your SSA? No. It's just, it's, it's just something that I just cannot get. Um, I do, I'm, again, another project I had was um, where somebody assumed that I knew how to do SSH the day the project was going live, and I was just like, I, I, I don't know. Unless you send me the list of the commands, I can, I can follow instructions, but you're going to have to help me out here. And it's just really, really not helpful. Um, so yeah, try not to assume knowledge. It's a very, very difficult skill because, you know, I'm, I'm probably not the person to speak to to kind of work out a way of how to not come across as a bit patronizing, but it's a bit of a tricky skill to do, but sometimes it may be better to be a bit more patronizing rather than assuming knowledge. Um, another example, because I'm racing ahead of time. Um, I worked, I did some work for SAS, and they had a front end built on WordPress, and they also had, um, the, the SAS was built on another system. Um, the front end, the, the pricing page was built on the SAS, because they wanted to change it, and the page on the WordPress site was kind of iframed in, because that's what the budget allowed at the time. I, I sent to the, their internal development team, so, do you mind just sending over the copy of the theme that is currently on the site so I can look at the iframe, copy it over, make sure everything's okay, and we can go from there. And they just reply and said, well, can't you just download it from the site? And the answer is yes. The problem was that they had this weird kind of Git, uh, Git repository system on the server, so that every single commit they had for the commit with uh, Git, um, created a new folder on the server of the git commit string, which is basically like a 30, 32 character hexadecimal string, so it's 1 to 9 and then A to F. And it's all like random numbers. All the timestamps as well was the 1st of January 1970. So I had to start trying to correct git commit for the latest commit that they made, go into that folder, go into the WP content within that folder, find the theme directory, 
the Steam Directory had SAS name final one two three four and then the years and I was like okay it's going to be one of these um, I found it took me two hours and they did so yeah right like, client marketing development relationship this is basically anticipating problems before they uh, arise Office liaison, so this is like a win-win-win situation. Benefits to the client, problems get fixed quicker. Benefits to you because it saves time, and benefits to marketers at the agency because there's less um, responsibility for them. So people who you should be speaking to as a developer, probably other in-house developers, um, designers and hosting companies are probably good people to speak to. Make sure you get the client's approval first. It may not ultimately be possible due to uh, non-disclosure agreements. Agree to boundaries. Uh, again, this talk is slowly becoming my therapy. But uh, the best example I ever had was uh, an agency who, when I worked for an agency, we had a client and they had an in house marketing thing. Um, they would ring me 45 minutes after sending an email saying, Why is the email not being answered? Um, that was really bad because immediately I turned around and went, and I went, to, I went defensive, and they immediately turned aggressive, you know, because they were like, why has it not been done? And I'm like, it's not been done because we haven't a chance, you know, things like that. If you agree to boundaries beforehand, that immediately stops. And if they do stop emailing, you know, ringing you up, um, you don't need to be negative because you can do it. As per our agreement, I will get back to this email whenever. And also put them um, less aggressive because it's like they become a bit defensive when they bring you up if something like that happens because they can turn around and go, look, I'm really sorry, but the server's on fire. Can you just look at it? And then straight away you can kind of, you know, it's a little bit more neutral, if that's the right word. Uh, have one point of contact. Problems arise uh, with more than one point of contact on both sides. Particularly if, more, if one of the points of contact on one side insists to use a, a method that hasn't been agreed. Um, priorities do get mis messed up big time if there's more than one contact on both sides. Document everything you change, uh, everything you change. Just document it somewhere, even to an email or in a Git repository or something like that. Um, if you have access to Google Analytics and people don't mind, you can annotate things in Google Analytics. So if you put a bunch of page speed improvements live, put a, um, put a note saying, yeah, we put a bunch of page speed improvements live, and, and then you can kind of see did they have an improvement on traffic and things like that. What to do when things go wrong? Try not to be confrontational, really, really not professional. Don't try and blame them, even if everything is a marketing scheme's fault. That's really not professional, um, especially if you're doing it in front of a client, which I've seen that happen before. Um, use documentation to refer decisions uh, made and why they were done. So, um, generally when you write documentation, it's before things go wrong, so it's written in a very neutral tone. So it can be a good time to kind of start having, you know, you know, it's written. This is why this was done. You can refer back to it then when things are beginning to go wrong and everything. Not that things are good, but you do. I've hidden behind agreements at times. Not always smart, but good for your sanity. If, if, you, if you agree to reply within one business day, do kind of wait and sit and think, on or think about something. It can be, it can make it a lot easier to deal with. And come to agreements for exit if the worst comes to the worst. Um, this, I think, has been proven over the last few years. Um, yeah, don't ghost your clients. Ghosting is a horrible thing. Um, and I've seen a lot of horror through in terms. Ghosts come back. You know, and I've had clients come back after four months, or not necessarily with me, but it's had, when, when, yeah, it was me. But it was an accident. They came back and they were just like, sorry, you know, kind of thing, and you have to kind of deal with it. Don't want to end on a sad note. So what do you do when things go right? Because things generally do go right. If you enjoy working with the marketing agency, um, recommend them. So I have three um, SEO agencies, uh, a freelancer, one that deals with bigger budgets to do full, full scale marketing, and one that's kind of in the middle. If you enjoy working with them, chance, you know, if you enjoy working with them, chances are you've got like a rapport already, can be useful things to do. 
keep an eye on the team on LinkedIn. That's really, really handy. Um, digital marketing is a bit like a me- me- uh, merry-go-round, so everybody kind of works for each other, um, especially for people who you enjoy working with. Even if you just have to press one button now and just kind of go, yeah, congratulations, you got a new job, congrats, congrats, congrats. And, and it's great because um, it keeps you in their mind. So they, if they have a WordPress problem, they'll come to you. Um, another really quick example. I used to work for a big travel agency. Um, Multinational. They have a massive team of travel bloggers. All those travel bloggers, or most of those travel bloggers, now have their own travel blog. Everyone built on WordPress. Guess who does all their WordPress work? Great. Right. Um, and if you become really, really friendly with them, um, ask them for your opinions on your own site over a coffee and beer. Um, it can be 200, 300 pounds a day training with these people, um, and a beer is a lot cheaper. So, yeah, that's a really, really handy tip to have. So, Dr. Val, thank you very much, and I have you take a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I actually want to know something. Okay. Have you got a horror story that you can share when things have gone very bad? Whether it happened to yourself or someone yeah. you know, have you got like, a horror story to share? The, the QVC one, uh, it, it was the client who were on QVC. That was something that went bad. And that, that, so that was a project I got brought in at a later stage. Um, but it was almost... So they, met, they basically they wanted to switch it over. Um, it was due to go live on mid, at midday. They told us they were going on BBC. Um, quarter to 12. Uh, and we were just like... No, this, this, this isn't going to happen because they, they, you know, and, and it, it was really, really bad. And it was they, this half of it is because of <laughs> not, 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 not for any other reason. Like the, 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 the one point of contact. It was because I was getting emails. We had like a, it was like a, a sauna board on how to deal with it. And then I was getting emails. I was being copied into emails that I shouldn't have been copied into emails because there was there was like project management teams and things like that. So yeah, that that was that's probably a horror story. I kind of that was fairly recently though. So. Um, yeah, can't bother that. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mean, generally speaking, no. I mean, that, that, that's probably been the worst one I've worked on for quite some time. Um, Getting better at filtering, so okay. yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Any advice on choosing a marketing agency to work with, or any warning signs as to who to work with? Um, okay, warning signs. Uh, anybody who guarantees those page rankings, no, they can't. Um, I would recommend. Sorry, where, where are you? Where are you based? Are you obviously based in Glasgow, or? Yeah. Okay. I would. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's probably like a marketing meetup somewhere in Glasgow. Like we, we're, I'm in Manchester and got my SEO. Uh, I know there's a couple in London. There's, there's one in Dublin. Um, I think one of the main one in Glasgow, Craig Campbell. Yeah, I know, you yeah, I know Craig Campbell. Craig Campbell is one guy in Glasgow. He's yeah, well known. So. But um, go to a lot of these meetups because generally what I find is that a lot of marketers who kind of are a little bit open, a little bit like, I'm happy to share what I know, like a very bar, um, is a really, really useful you know, and there'll, there'll be some that will just come like, no, I know everything, I want to keep hold of it and not share it. Um, the ones that are a little bit more open are more than happy to kind of speak to you and everything. Um, I, was a, I can recommend some in, in Manchester, but unfortunately, like a lot of mine are Manchester and London and things like that, so the people that I found there. So try to check in, um, go to meetup.com yeah. and check there, type in SQL and search, and you can go, you never know what you can find. Yeah, so maybe you can to try, If you do that, try and find one that has quite a lot of members, because so, people will just set it up and try and sell you the software. So. I was just wondering what um, things you've applied to your own site from working with marketers, things you've learned, you've allowed to um, improve your own. Okay, Uh, so things that I've learned. Um, I. One of of my drinking buddies uh, is um, a Facebook 
it's, it's like a Facebook like paid social expert and he has taught me like for example a lot of it when I started it was everything was under my name you can set up a Facebook business account which is really really handy because you can get away with a few more naughty things um, like, like, like so I got my face I got my Facebook account banned from paid social so it was like I mean how bad must I have been if I if I basically they said face, Facebook turned around to me and said we don't want any more of your money you know kind of thing so I managed to get a plan um, yeah, sorry about that um, but I managed to restore it by creating a business account um, I other things I've learned um, a lot of Google, a lot of the Google Analytics I've learned by you know showing them my Google Analytics and kind of going, right, what would you recommend? Things like campaign building and things like that is kind of like a useful thing to do. It's a little bit of JavaScript, but it's any book, you know, three lines of JavaScript and copy and things like that. Yeah. We've got, yeah, we've got one or two more questions you can ask. We've learned an offering. Okay, so if I'm starting a new company, yeah. what should be my startup budget for digital marketing or something? Or to be even even more clear, yeah. what will I get if I have a budget of one thousand pounds for um, the startup? What can I expect to get? Okay. Will, will people even talk to me or they will just ignore my email or whatever? Okay. What um, so the freelancer I know. I think that's like the if, like so basically you should really be running something for six months, like in the of marketing kind of thing. I think they do work. Uh, I think the minimum kind of I think is about three hundred a month, um, and that's enough. It depends on what you do. So if you're targeting kind of like a, a small area, that should you know you probably don't need as long as you kind of optimize for that local area, that could just be enough. Um, so something like if you're targeting, you know, our studios in, in Glasgow, for example, chances are, you know, if you get the Google local, if you get, you know, the, um, you know, up to my keywords and things like that, chances are you'll, you'll probably be somewhere and then you can begin to kind of go, right, where can we go from here? So it may be like a bit longer process. Um, and I think my freelancer friend, don't quote me on this. But I think it's like 300 months from kind of start up. Kind of thing. That's just, so that is just like a technical SEO um, and a bit of a building and things like that. I could be wrong. <laughs> I have one more question if anyone has it. Anyone want it? I didn't know you could annotate things in Google Analytics. How do you do it? I mean, um, is it easy to say or not? It, it's a... Right. I, I, I don't want to go to that result. You definitely did used to do it. Uh, do I want to show? I, I'll, I'll talk to me after, and I'll probably just kind of... Anybody else as well is like, when's the next break? Is it, is it now? It's like, now. No. Okay. Next break... I'm, I'm happy to stay here and just kind of show or, or something, or, or, or we could go and sit out there because I, I need to kind of click through. I could be completely wrong with that, but if anybody wants to kind of do that, I'm more than happy for about like five, ten minutes just to sit out and have a click through. And now's a good time because we have coffee break, you have actually about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, so relax, chill, get a drink, and uh, if you can be back in whatever room you want to go to just before quarter past three. And uh, if we get to the next session. So well, thank you, Reece. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. No worries.